amidst a looming amphibian apocalypse, where a deadly fungal disease is wiping out entire frog populations. One unconventional solution is turning heads. Chytrid fungus, the pathogen driving countless amphibian species toward extinction, sounds like something out of the sci-fi thriller HBO's The Last of Us, but it's happening right now in the real world, not on a Hollywood screen. While The Last of Us gripped audiences with a fungal pandemic threatening humanity, this isn't fiction. It's an actual, real-life crisis unfolding as we speak. As conservationists race against time to save these fragile creatures, could this new technique be the key to halting an extinction-level event? Stay with us to uncover how these tiny amphibians are battling their own real-world apocalypse and the surprising twist that could change everything. Chytridiomycosis, caused by the fungus Botrachocatrium dendrobatidis BD, has been silently devastating amphibian populations for decades, first identified in the 1970s and 1980s. This deadly pathogen has been responsible for wiping out entire species and is linked to the extinction of at least 90 amphibian species, with over 500 more facing steep declines. What makes this disease particularly alarming is how it attacks amphibian skin, their primary means of respiration and hydration, leading to a slow, inevitable death. Amphibians, already sensitive to environmental changes, are now facing a perfect storm as climate change accelerates the spread of this fungus into new regions, such as parts of Europe. The reach of BD is growing, turning what was once a localized issue into a global crisis. The effects of this epidemic aren't just devastating for amphibians, but for entire ecosystems that depend on these species for balance. The ongoing spread of BD mirrors the trajectory of a pandemic, with consequences that could ripple through biodiversity and the health of the planet itself. Scientists have uncovered a new technique they call frog saunas, and it's making waves in the fight against a deadly fungal disease. The concept behind frog saunas is remarkably simple yet effective. Researchers, led by Dr. Anthony Waddle of Macquarie University, place sun-heated masonry bricks in outdoor environments frequented by green and golden bell frogs. These bricks, with their circular openings, provided the frogs with a warm retreat. By basking inside these sun-heated bricks, the frogs were able to elevate their body temperatures, a crucial factor in combating chytrid fungus, which thrives in cooler conditions. This method of using heated bricks as artificial saunas has demonstrated notable success. Infected frogs that utilized these sun-heated refuges showed a significant reduction in the severity of their infections and were 23 times more likely to survive future outbreaks of the fungus. The simple and affordable nature of this intervention makes it an appealing option for both conservationists and the general public. While the frog sauna presents a promising solution, it is not a universal cure. Dr. Waddle and his team are exploring the potential of this approach for other amphibian species, especially those in warmer climates. However, for amphibians in cooler environments, like the critically endangered Panamanian golden frog, the heat may prove too stressful. Additionally, the challenge of eradicating bee deed entirely is daunting, akin to eliminating the common cold. While frog saunas offer a temporary respite, the ultimate goal is to develop more comprehensive solutions, including vaccines and chemical treatments. Some scientists are also hopeful that evolutionary adaptations in amphibians could provide a long-term solution. The frog sauna offers a unique and promising solution to chytrid fungus. Frogs aren't the only wildlife facing severe threats from disease. Other species, like bats, Tasmanian devils, and bees, are also battling devastating infections that threaten their survival. Let's take a look at how these creatures are being affected and what's being done to save them. White Nose Syndrome Caused by the cold-loving fungus asterisk Pseudogymnoiscus destructans asterisk has devastated bat populations across North America. The fungus attacks bats during hibernation, causing them to burn through their fat reserves and leading to starvation. A breakthrough treatment has been developed by researchers Sibylla Mellon, Dan Lindner, and Chris Cornelison. They discovered that the bacterium asterisk Rhodococcus rhodococcus rhodocrus asterisk, commonly found in North American soils, produces volatile organic compounds, VOCs, that inhibit the growth of the fungus. 
exposing bats to air containing these VOCs has shown promising results in reducing fungal infections. Field tests have demonstrated that early treatment with these VOCs can significantly lower fungal loads in infected bats, potentially offering a new tool to combat this devastating disease and protect bat populations. Tasmanian devils have been suffering from a unique and contagious form of cancer known as Devil Facial Tumor Disease DFTD. This cancer forms tumors on the face and neck of affected devils, making it difficult for them to eat and leading to a swift decline in health. Research into DFTD has revealed that the disease is one of only a few known transmissible cancers spread through bites and close contact. While efforts to find a cure continue, researchers are exploring various avenues, including the possibility that environmental factors like pesticides could play a role in the disease's prevalence. In a glimmer of hope, recent studies suggest that the disease might be evolving, allowing some devils to live longer and spread the cancer more slowly. This evolution might give conservationists and scientists time to develop effective strategies for managing and potentially curing DFTTD. Colony Collapse Disorder CCD, has led to the loss of billions of honeybees, crucial pollinators for many crops. The exact causes of CCD remain unclear, but factors such as pesticides, parasites, poor nutrition, and viruses are all suspected contributors. Recent studies have highlighted the role of neonicotinoid pesticides, which have been linked to bee deaths. Despite evidence suggesting that these chemicals harm bee populations, regulatory responses have been slow. Efforts to address CCD include researching pesticide alternatives, improving bee nutrition, and developing disease-resistant bee strains. While no single solution has emerged, ongoing research and community involvement are essential to mitigate the impact of CCD and support bee populations. Another consequence of declining amphibian populations is the role they play in regulating mosquito populations and the spread of diseases. Amphibians play a critical role in controlling mosquito populations and preventing the spread of mosquito-borne diseases such as malaria and dengue fever. In aquatic environments, tadpoles and mosquito larvae compete for the same food sources. As amphibian numbers dwindle, fewer tadpoles are available to consume mosquito larvae. This imbalance can lead to an increase in mosquito populations as more larvae survive and mature into adult mosquitoes. Amphibians and mosquitoes also compete for suitable habitats. Amphibians, such as frogs and toads, occupy various water bodies and damp environments. When amphibian populations decline, mosquitoes may face less competition for these living spaces, potentially leading to increased mosquito numbers. Evidence from studies conducted in Costa Rica and Panama shows a significant rise in malaria cases following amphibian die-offs. The reduction in amphibian populations likely contributed to higher mosquito numbers, which in turn facilitated the spread of malaria. Amphibians are integral to their ecosystems, serving as both predators and prey. Their decline can disrupt the food chain and have broader implications for ecosystem health. This disruption can affect not only other wildlife, but also human populations, livestock, and plant life. Amphibians are also considered indicator species due to their sensitivity to environmental changes. They can signal shifts in ecosystem health and climate conditions. Monitoring amphibian populations can provide valuable insights into broader ecological trends and potential issues affecting various species. Protecting these creatures is essential for maintaining ecological balance and safeguarding public health. The simplicity of the frog sauna makes it an excellent candidate for community involvement. Individuals can contribute by building and maintaining these warm refuges, educating others about amphibian conservation, and creating frog-friendly environments in their own backyards. Supporting research and conservation efforts through donations or participation in citizen science projects can also make a significant difference. Dr. Waddle's research represents a hopeful step forward in amphibian conservation. While it's clear that the fight against tritridiomycosis is far from over, innovative approaches like the frog sauna offer a valuable tool in the effort to preserve these vital species. As conservationists continue to develop and refine their strategies, there is renewed optimism for the future of amphibian populations and the ecosystems they support. In the end, the frog sauna is more than just a quirky conservation tool. 
It's a symbol of human ingenuity and dedication to preserving our planet's rich biodiversity.